Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you here today to the Jackson County Board of Supervisors meeting for Tuesday, September 12th of 2023. And uh, welcome either in person or on Zoom capabilities today. So first on our agenda is Mr. Todd Keeney. I didn't even see you sitting back there. You were the camera. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, not a whole lot to go over. I got one um, Class D residential permit. It's actually a driveway that's existing that wasn't permitted, so we're having a permit it and then also put in a driveway too. Um, the side distance from the south is fine, but coming from the north, it's got a curve, a linear alignment, and uh, the size distance is like 255 feet, but there's a speed limit already in place. From the north at 30 mile an hour so at 30 mile an hour 255 feet is good so anyway but it's a, the driveway's already there we're just making a per minute and then have to put the tube in so make a motion to approve sir i have a motion and a second to approve Corey gamble van beer in section two uh second residential entrance um permit all those in favor say aye uh, aye opposed same sign motion carried and then uh, just real quick on projects, um, we started back doing retrieval again now that we got some rain. Um, hopefully we'll be able to stay with that until we get done. We have about I think around 18 miles left to do. Um, they're going to pour. There's a pre-pour meeting today at 2 out at the bridge, 49th Street. Um, they're going to pour that deck tomorrow. And then uh looks like they're going to pour the deck on the... Uh, Otter Creek Bridge uh, this week too. So the day labor bridge. So that first day labor bridge should be getting done, open back up, I would think, by the end of next week. So then we'll get it just in time for harvest season. Though. Well, then we're going to close and do another bridge. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, um, I had a few questions, I guess, calls on, I mean, the grading operations on these retrieval roads. And I said, well, I've heard, and I don't know this, maybe you can that you when you if you grade when it's too dry it makes it worse but uh so there's some washboards on some of the newer ones and i don't know what the time frame is for each section or area but so like with rain now guys would be out blading so if you blade a road say this washboard that's really dry um even if you cut out the washboards since there's no moisture to get it packed together, the washboards will come back right away i mean you you could probably make it better for you a few days but as soon as traffic gets on it, it's going to start washboarding again. Yeah. If there's no moisture, I mean, I've had I've heard a lot of good comments, so they they like what we're doing. And yep. and we got extra graders on the roads we are retreating, correct? So yeah, so usually we got we're pulling the guy from that district plus one other grader typically. So, but yeah, they they should be getting over the roads bladed now that we got decent moisture. And I don't know how much you guys got here, but. I think it's very I spotty. A, I had about two tents at my house. Yeah. I had like two tents. I think out at Jacobs, we had like almost eight. Yeah, I heard down south, Preston and Miles got more. Did get more down? Yeah, like it rained pretty much on and off all day yesterday down in Clark County. So, anyway, that's really all I have. So, okay, appreciate it. Thank you, Todd. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, we will move on to uh, visitors or citizens. Is there anyone with us today that would like to approach the board? Yes, sir. Step forward, please, and uh, state your name. And good morning. May I approach? You right up here at the chair, if you would. Yep. Oh, sure. If you have information for us. Yes. Sure. Thank you. Is this uh, would this be involving our our secondary roads? Yes. Would you sneak in there and ask Todd to step back? <laughs> no sense of going through it twice, right? Todd, we have a visitor here, and I thought maybe you might want to be involved in, involved in this discussion. So that's what he gave us. All right. Good morning. Would you state your name? And uh, Don Bales. I live at 57182 17th Street, Sedula. And I want to visit on this subject of trees in the roadway right away. This is particularly at a corner just west of me where the trees are sticking on the road and visibility is very short. 
And I have asked the workers numerous times to trim them, and they tell me they can't cut trees or won't cut trees. I don't know what it is, but they're line of sight trees, and I feel they should be cut. Last year, I asked two guys to cut them, and they said they couldn't cut them because for whatever reason, I don't know. I said, well, use a chainsaw if you re won't reach it. They said, well, we can't cut them. Well, I went and cut two trees out so we could see, but they've grown up over the year now a lot more. And last week, my grandsons were leaving school and had a wreck on that because someone pulled out of a farm drive, higher fencing pulled out, and said the trees in their way they could not see, so that's why they pulled out on the road. Well, yeah, I guess to me, this doesn't look like trees. This looks more like brush to me, if I'd call well, it. Well, there's brush and trees. It definitely and... looks like it needs to be maybe trimmed back some. Todd, you want yeah, to? I don't, you, you probably don't know who you talked to, did you? Yes, I do, but I don't, I don't want to mention names. All right, what's this road right here? That's 17th Street. Okay, what's this? This is 559. 559. Avenue. Right. Okay, I just... Yeah, so this we should be able to mow with the... Well, so you guys brush cutter. Did, 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 we got a boom mower that would reach that easily. So I don't know. No, I don't think it will. This maybe it will. I don't know. This isn't that looks like it's right next to the road. You no, know? this is a problem. This tree up here. This is just a little brush along the road. Oh, so it's like you can't. This is farther away from the intersection. This, this, this is in the intersection, but it's a tree that's growing up. Okay, so this one and this one. Okay, and this to the east. This is this is going west. And this is going eight. This is the same intersection. Okay. I'm sitting in my vehicle and I take the picture. Okay, so this is looking to your left and that's looking to your right. Okay, I got you. Okay. I think we can take a look at that, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, we certainly want to know if there's obstructions that block the view I've, of, uh, you know, even on Highway 61, if you're coming out of Swingle, you, you cannot see north when them cars come south. There's six or seven different road signs in brush, and it's just impossible. Well, to that. my concern, well, it's a neighborhood conversation quite often about all the trees growing up in the ditches. <laughs> that when they mow, sometimes I've seen where they mow up to the tree and then go around it, and they could easily mow over it. Mm -hmm. So I would like to see that concern taken up a little bit. Yeah, I, I guess this is my suggestion is that when that happens, then you make the call here to secondary roads or to Todd or to the engineer's office. We well, I've spoken to the more, more people. Uh, I guess you want to approach the boss instead of call the call the well, I, I, I don't like to do that to I, I understand. We're not well, in some way, it depends on the size of what the brush is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not out there to see what that size well, truly is. I know is, we, we but... got the brush mower, but we also bought a bobcat or a, a skid loader that has a mower on the front. Um, we've been recently taking a little bit more active role in trying to open up the line of sight and road right of ways and, and cleaning up the ditches. So this is something I definitely want to know about. But uh, okay, well, usually I... the first step is just call in and say, hey, you know, we got a tree in the right of way. Then we'll take a look at it. But the ditches are really growing up with trees in our area. And we're addressing, a, you know, I guess I can't particularly say what area the most, but we've been doing some active spraying and uh, some extra, you know, whether it be brush cutting or tree removal, it's hard to keep up with right. 650 miles of roads on both sides, but it's gravel road. So it's, uh, but we, no, we have been. And yeah, when you have issues, though, please give us a call or a secondary well, I know from years ago, they used to always cut brush in the winter and cut them out. Yeah, and I can't say what the policy is, but. Yeah, so cutting brush typically in the wintertime, it just depends on a lot of things, but like how, how often you're plowing snow, if the ditches are full of snow. So when, you know, if if we get a mild winter and we don't, we're not out plowing much and the ditches are full of snow, you're going to get a lot more brush cut. It just depends. You know, it's, it just depends. But yeah, we're still doing that. Well, I had two previous people, they both retired now, tell me they were not blanking tree trimmer. Hmm. No. So. Well, I guess, I mean, here's the other thing, Don. I know you don't want to steer the pot too much because you live live with these people and, and you know, you play cards with them and whatnot. But the point is, it's still, we have to know about it. We can't do anything about it. We don't know about it. I mean, we... 
Understand. We certainly talk to our employees without causing well, friction. No, like you said, I don't want to stir the pot too much and cause too many hard right. feelings. I get it. Yeah, I get it. But we really, still have a job to do. So. It's, and you, for the most part, there are a lot of trees and brush in the right of way. And I think what I was talking to uh, Mike, and there's a few spots where we're going to get prices for a contractor to come in and clear the right of way of trees. Where we got this is be spots where on hills. Where the, like in the wintertime, it never opens up because of the canopy and we have a hell of a time so getting get the, the, the snow out. pack off. So we're going to get prices to clear. Those are like big trees. Those are like taking timber out. Mm -hmm. But like this stuff here, when we're cutting brush, we need to prioritize pretty much just the intersections because mm -hmm. we don't have enough time and manpower to do every road mile. But we could probably, we need to focus our time at the intersections for sight distance. And then the straightaways and all that, you know, we'll, we'll keep mowing, but you know, right. we don't have enough the time. The mower only gets so far over, too. Then. Yeah, so you like but, an arm wrench, too, right? Right, yeah. yeah. Right. A boom mower, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. And those can only take down certain size trees, too. You wouldn't want to go out there and start whacking down big trees with that. But, but so, they can take down, a, I think they say up to like a four-inch tree, I think, in the mowers we have. So I we'll, also we'll want to read a look at that intersection. Okay, thank you very much for your time. I also want to reiterate that we also have a not just sweet ordinance that states that landowners should maintain brush and other species of brush and, and material between the fence and the right -way. So it says that in our not just sweet ordinance that landowners should be responsible to maintain that. And we always did when we were on the farm, but as you know, and I know, Donnie, you go down the road nowadays, most fence lines are not even maintained. You couldn't, right. you couldn't go in and make a fence because they're not, they're rolled up in brush and trees. And, well, we could go out here. Yeah. Time <laughs> but I appreciate, yeah, we certainly have a concern. I had to hire a bulldozer to clean mine out so I could put a fence in. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I understand that we a lot of problems. Yeah. No, I, I, I firmly believe the intersection should have top priority getting cleaned out. So, yeah. and I have seen the them going out with the brush mower oh, yeah. recently, you know, kind of now that it's been drier and they couldn't really blade, they've been going out with that. Now, what areas it's been in, I mean, obviously, Jackson County, we've got a lot of areas to cover. So, I don't think it's really been down in your area there, down there. So, but. As you're going home, if you notice at that Delmar blacktop, they kind of hit right in there, that intersection. So eventually, hopefully that'll be what you see a lot more of on on our roads once they get that out and going. Thank you for your time. You bet. Appreciate Thank you for it. Your Thanks for stopping. All right, Julie. Julie Fern is our Drug Free Communities Project Coordinator. Good morning. And Chelsea Herber is from ASAC in Cedar Rapids. Okay. She's joining us as well today. Sure. Are you there, Chelsea? Hi, yes, I'm here. Okay. Good morning, Chelsea. Okay. So you should have a copy of the contract between um, the county and ASAC for the grant year starting September 30th, yeah. as well as a spreadsheet that broke down what the expenses were. Um, there is an increase. Um, everything's kind of gone up. Um, do, you, uh, do you have any questions? Or is, our goal is to sign the contract for services for the next grant year. I mean, this is pretty much the same discussion we had last week, correct? It is. I mean, we had questions in, and I think you answered them. Okay. Uh, anybody else have questions? For Julie? Yeah, Mike has a copy of our end of the year report of things we accomplished. Um, it's on the top there, Mike. That's what I submit to the... So every health um, Board of Health meeting, and I think Nim can attest because she's there as well, that's who I've really been reporting to the last five years. That was kind of what was decided when we got the initial grant. Um, then instead of coming here all the time to Board of Health, keep them updated. And so that's a copy of the report that they're getting for the meeting next week. And I try to, I send those to Julian to forward to you. Um, you know, in the future, if you want like monthly reports directly to you, you know, whatever, just let me know. We're happy to accommodate. 
So in this contract, the only thing that really changed was the uh, adjustment in the in the, the increase in fees and numbers, right? The numbers went up, like yeah, um, the printing went off, uh, went up because printing went up, the rent went up. I mean, yeah, yeah, they went and up. The because, salary, the salary did go up. I mean, we did question that last week. So, you I did. Mean, who who determines that? And I believe you told us it was based on performance and and. Uh, and you know, ASAC has other prevention people. It's all structured, and yeah. Anything to add, Chelsea? No, nothing to add. Uh, yeah, I can piggyback off what Julie just said. Uh, yep, performance based for Julie. Uh, just really proud of all the work she's done in the last five years on the grant. Um, but we very much have a salary schedule, like she said, for prevention specialists. So, um, this very much still aligns with all the other prevention. Um. Uh, staff that we have on our team. And these fees are all covered under the grant. Everything would be paid. This all comes out of the grant. Okay. And we budgeted for it, so it's in the grant for the year. Right. And these are all really real costs, you know. So we pulled all of our different, uh, you know, the internet is all like real costs, all of those type of things. We pulled all those invoices. So if you ever have questions with those things, I'm happy to share any of that, um, but just so that you kind of are aware of all that. Move to approve. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second to approve the uh, ASAC 2024 contract as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank, Thank you. So Thank it's you, Julie. Be right here ahead. Thank you. Yes. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you, Chelsea. All right, then we'll move on and we'll move to Kelly Brown, our Jackson County Economic Alliance Director. And it looks like she brought a sidekick along. So Ben's, Ben's with, and I'm here for moral support. <laughs> no, he's had a friend too. <laughs> and if you've been around a while, if you would both of you please just introduce yourselves again. And Well, while Kelly's handing that out, uh, Ben Davison from the Jackson County Economic Alliance. I'm the assistant director. I'm Kelly Brown, Jackson County Economic Alliance, the director. You want one to Sure. We are here today to give you a brief update, highlight of things that are going on. Thank you. And I won't go through all this, so you can have it for your reference. Um, in the last six months, we visited with 40 different businesses and partners. And um, you know, we continue to establish the personal connection. We want people to know who we are. We want people to feel free to come in and ask any question. We want people to be able to let us know when they have successes and then also let us know their challenges so that we can be uh, we can be um, proactive you know and be the support that they would need um we do have some news and i apologize because i know that we try to copy you on a lot of different emails but we also know that you have a lot of things coming in so if some of this you're like i know this already and you know, just have this be a refresher. But um, QFE is a business that we've been actually, Dave, Dave and Nick started that, um, gosh, probably even a year before mm -hmm. I started. And um, it's been a work in progress. They've been working on financing for literally the last couple of years. And they've got stack financing. They've got some federal money coming in, some state money coming in. And they're finalizing, I think, a USDA grant. And then once they have grant funding, once they have that, then they're going to move forward with um, actually a lease contract with Opus Development. Um, Opus Development is very busy, or it's actually across the country. They uh, have a lot of commercial industrial type spaces. They do spec buildings. And so they have a green, and I've actually worked with Opus when I was with the city of Grimes. I'm familiar with what they do and they, they do very good work. Could you tell me what that acronym stands for? 
Uh, it's their name. <laughs> okay, maybe it's not an acronym. Opus there. Opus, I don't know the. Opus. Yeah, I, yeah, I think it's it's just their name. It's okay, all right. I guess I've never heard of them, so yeah. That's, uh, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So they're gonna um, QFE really wanted to find a building. In fact, we worked with them on the Hollander building for quite a while, and that didn't work out. And then Control, right? Control moved into the Control Hollander. moved into the Hollander building. Now they got two ships. Ships are correct. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. They're doing, yeah, they're doing great. Well. They are. And so. Um, and what do they do? What does Control do? Yes. Do you want to explain that? Yeah. So they uh, are contracted with John Deere to take the shipping containers that they use to transport um, the materials for uh, uh, construction of their equipment, farm equipment, mm -hmm. and they repurpose those. I don't know exactly what that looks like. But apparently, it's a necessary. It's, a, it's, it's yeah. a big industry for John Deere to be able to reuse yeah. the mm -hmm. transport materials. Oh, and I know they got a lot of tractor or trailers setting up yeah, there. A lot of somebody's mm -hmm. going out. They got a lot of ship yeah. workers. You see them there. They'll settle in. That's good. Five, they get their bread carried out along some of the streets. So it's it's nice to see that building being used yeah. again. Mm -hmm. So yeah, <laughs> so QFE is going to lease from Opus. Um, we've heard they are going to take five and a half acres, although I think they're pushing 10 acres because realistically, um, at least the realtor thinks that they're underestimating the, their needs and that once they really, the shovel, they start to move dirt, they're going to realize that they need more than they originally planned for. So that'll be a nice expansion. They're looking at 35 to 50 employees. I'm sorry, nice startup. They're looking at 35 to 50 employees and then they're expecting that business to just take off. What they do the short version is they take dairy cattle waste and they convert it into like a charcoal. It's a high activated, activated charcoal. Activated charcoal. It's like a high fuel source. They there's something they use in the wastewater plants that helps with the treatment of the plants. Um, fertilizers. Fertilizers. Yeah. There's three pro products there's four. out of four. Yes. There's four products yeah. that they make out of. Jack um, stopped by my office and he showed me, and I'm just like. It's activated charcoal here. Yeah. And I'm like, think of that. Coming yeah. from dairy waste. Yeah. yeah. And they actually they work with the <laughs> no dairy wonder makes you throw yeah. out. <laughs> I don't like when I get that. <laughs> yeah, they actually work with dairy farmers and then they have part of their pre-treatment, if you will, is actually done on the side of the dairy farm and then it's then transported to the facility and then so do we know where it. this is going actually? Is, we don't well yeah. we kind of do the, the the proposed site down at the industrial park is going to be across from husco right next to the substation and about 5.5 acres east um, so between family dollar and husco yeah yeah although they might expand that oh out. i'm on the wrong area no yeah. wonder Duh. okay yeah got sorry so when josh, josh stopped by he said that just to there's really no smell to it yeah and that was a big concern when right. we're dealing with but it's a specific dairy waste that ha it can't just be that right. certain dairy cows and, and all that kind of stuff and things are kind of dried before it gets there. Right. So well, like I was said poop is poop, but, yeah, <laughs> but it, it, the pre-treatment of it. But I'm sure what they're doing on the farm is out. taking care of yeah. that issues more than right. anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so they they're keeping the smell, and then we don't get the smell. Yeah. So and then Opus is always is also going to be constructing kind of a spec building too. And we don't know the exact size of that down there, but it's just something for if there's a future industry that wanted to move down there that there's a building available. They proposed something what a hundred thousand. Yeah, they aren't sure. We've heard they weren't from sure. heard a couple different numbers yeah. of how big they want the spec building to be, but there's still talk about what that would look like from Opus's side. So we certainly like the idea of more industry in, in the area, of course. I mean, I'm sure there's incentives involved too, but that's yeah, good so to hear. far there's nothing really, I mean, they're, they're still good to hear that. Yeah. At one point there was somebody else that was interested in putting up the 200,000 square foot spec building and it kind of fell by the wayside about 10 years ago. So we can talk more about that if you want. I know, I'm sure. That. Yeah. yeah, we've had that discussion. <laughs> okay. um, so anyway, we're we're actually working on trying to get those numbers finalized so we know what's left to market because just 
gosh, six weeks ago, it actually was when Josh was on vacation, we had an RFP for a data center down there, but they wanted more land than we had available. That was one of the challenges. We did find some other sites. However, they needed 50 megawatts of power within 18 months, which actually we were able to provide. However, it would be dependent on the transformer size because transformers, depending on the size, are three years out. So, but when it came down to it, we actually met the power requirement, which was the first question that they asked. And then I asked, what about water? Because data centers use a lot of water. And actually the, the data centers that are specializing in AI or the ones that are converting to AI are using exponentially more water than the original data centers. So they wanted an additional 1.5 million gallons of water a day. And currently in Makokota, we have a capacity, additional capacity of 250,000 gallons of water a day. So that immediately eliminated us being in the running for not only this one, but future ones as well. So we've actually been working on kind of transitions to SWOT analysis, which are streaks, weaknesses, opportunities, mm -hmm. threats, you know, to really identify what cities have, what resources, what cities are planning for additional resources, what does that all look like? So that as we're make as we're sending out those, hey, do you know we're here and this is what we have available? Because this inquiry actually came from a conversation that we had had with Mike, I'm forgetting his last name, I'm sorry, but um, no, but no, the one from that works with Debbie Durham at Aida. Oh. Anyway, they were here when Debbie was here for a visit. He and I had talked and we were talking about different things we have available. And so he sent us this when it came op open, knowing that, you know, he had seen a lot of the good things that were happening here. And he was like, hey, we'll give you that. We don't want to waste your time by giving you something that there's no way that you can come close to. But, you know, and I said, give us a chance, you know, let us see what we have and what we can put together. And so they had sent it. So anyway, because of those conversations, we want to continue continue to market not only that, but also know what it is we can market in certainty so, so we can be very responsive to these proposals and also know that maybe we can't do this now, but in three years, Makokota is planning on or Bellevue is planning on or, you know, whatever the case is, or, you know, REC is building additional substation here and they'll be able to do this and... You know, whatever that looks like, we just so, need to really know. So in a data center like that, when they're saying they need an increase of like 1.5 million gallons of water per day, that water's not gone. They can't, it can't be recirculated or? No, or... it's used as processed through the plant because they also look at wastewater plant capacity too. There is a certain portion that is, but they really look at an additional, that's what they're saying is. We need to be able to give them additional 1.5 million gallons of water a day. It's crazy, the amount of water that... Mm -hmm. I'm assuming is it for like cooling or mm -hmm. yeah for the whole processing yeah. then yeah and evidently like I said the AI whole it makes the servers run you probably know more all about this water do we put on top of our servers that makes it cringe <laughs> Yeah, anyway, but yeah, it's it's pretty interesting. But the bottom line is we just need to know what it is we can offer and then what it is we'll be able to offer going forward or what makes sense. You know, like when we were talking to the power company about um, having things in place so that we can be better in a better position to be able mm -hmm. to, you know, jump on these things. You know, then they talk about, well, your upfront investment when you have no guarantee or in return that most of the our cities and our facilities aren't in a financial position to be able to just have things sitting there in case. Sitting there on what ifs. Yeah. Right. In case. yeah. But There's... to know you can offer it or to know what, again, right. companies now are wanting, you know, bigger or better. Right. Or, yeah, those are definitely conversations because you know, we've well, already we started. are improving something. Yeah. And that's what to look for. Yeah. yeah. Good sense. Yeah. So um, grants, I have the list there, but we're finalizing the Sabunal. In fact, I think you all received a, a invitation for the open house on September 22nd. Um, Preston Times actually completed last winter. We're working on another preliminary discussions with a very interested party in Sabula and one in Makokoda. 
and Ben was Ben and Josh were involved in the Thriving Communities grant. They did qualify for the first round, but they didn't get selected as a thriving community. And Ben attended the um, sessions where they presented, and those communities that received it. Bacopa has has advanced leaps and bounds with everything that, as you know, that's been accomplished in the last five years to put themselves in a position. But unfortunately, there's just other cities that have gone above, I, don't, I wouldn't say above and beyond because they've actually met the qualifications, but, you know, that have really invested more, especially in like the public-private partnerships or nonprofit partnerships and things that, you know, where they're investing their money and their time and helping communities, as they say, thrive as well. So, but knowing what that looks like, then again, mm -hmm. when we know more of what they're looking for, then we can better position ourselves so that the next time these things come around, we can be in a position to qualify. Um, we're also in discussions with uh, for upper, another upper story grant in the Coconut CDBG upper story grant. Um, I think you all were aware and involved in the, we actually had 25 letters of recommendation for our World Child Care Market Study grant. So I'm hoping that that in itself just wows the grant writers and grant reviewers. Oh, and yeah, say, yes, because I was reading the paper this morning and Dubuque Community Schools are taking the Medline building mm -hmm. and making yep. it a child care yep. place. And there's, and there, I mean, it's going to, with a tune of like $3 million in expense. Hmm. So I've said this for years that school system needs to get involved with it with the child care because otherwise it's just not going to float. It's just not going to happen privately. Probably. I'm just wondering how they can do that without they bond or without it. Oh, they have. <laughs> uh, yeah, they they have, have, I mean, it's an infrastructure yeah. type funding. I, I don't know. So I mean, they're they're going to do it. You know, right. and yeah. what a great asset. Right. You know. I think the Dubuque City, Dubuque Economic Development, yeah. the school system. I mean, there's and they received some significant grants. Because there were some larger child care infrastructure grants that were over a million dollars for par yeah. par partnerships like that. And that, I know yeah, I mean, that that's, that, that's quite, and yeah. that would be just a tremendous asset. Because they're also in 911 center, right? Or something like, I know there's another thing that's going to be in that building along with the child care. Um, I thought they were building a new 911 building. Don't and, know for sure. Yeah, I know that they're doing a partnership in that building, but I don't remember what the other partner was. But yeah, yeah. And while I'm thinking of it here, I just want to touch on one of the weaknesses you have listed here, public transportation. So, I mean, we just had an RTA meeting last week. And, and of course, um, we have the RTA here in COVID. Yeah. That probably don't get utilized as much as it should, but they really are. People are interested. They really are looking for people, um, looking for individuals to employ, you know, and they're mm -hmm. very yeah. flexible. Um, about their hours, you can work anywhere from 10 to 30 hours a week or whatever you whatever you desire, you know. And some situations, you know, we call for a CD, some don't. Bus endorsements, some do, some don't. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they're really looking for people um, and, and could use the help. You know. yeah. so that, Anybody interested in a little bit of work here or there, yeah. yeah. Well, in the SWAT, just, just full disclosure, the SWAT agreement, this was an assignment that we actually had for our marketing class. And I sent out the email just to, I think you all received it. And then I sent it out to our board and I sent it out to like the chambers and random organizations. All this is, is just something that is, it's a first draft of sure. this is the comment. This is not sure. at all. No, well, I, I, it's I, all not I, at all. I, I, I had it in my notes to yeah. mention later on. But, <laughs> no, talking about the RTA, um, we had a lot of times people, um, think only certain people use that. It is open for anybody to use. It is like it's like the bus in Chicago and the subway in New York. And, well they'll go to Preston. You know, and, yeah, yeah, they'll go you can call them and they will go. And I think people don't understand that that, that is out there for anybody to use. They talk about <clears throat> car <coughs> excuse me, carpooling from like Makogata to Dubuque for if you have a certain number of people that all go to the same job place. They can organize carpools and mm -hmm. provide transportation mm -hmm. vans, all that kind of stuff. Everything. So yeah. they're actively recruiting anybody to come in and try to use the RTA because it is just something that is severely underutilized. And uh, a lot of the bigger communities are figuring that out and taking advantage of it and growing leaps and bounds where maybe it's more needed here, but it's just the impression or the understanding of what they're supposed to do that um, makes So it's based on 
rides too. Their funding is based yeah. on rides. So the more rides they give, we get more. They get more funding, and of course, it makes the rides a lot cheaper. Right. You know. Right. So yeah. it's, it's just a disrespectful, but you know. No, we would really like to see that utilized so we can keep it active here and not do that. And some things to look at, like they've done recently, like trips to farmer markets and yep. different areas. So, sure. You know, people can get out and see different areas that maybe are limited on transportation. So mm -hmm. if there's groups out there that are looking for something like that, you know, keep that in mind. That's a really yeah. good resource there. But I know transportation is a huge like act, I would say after hours. Yeah, you know, we don't have a taxi cab in town. We don't have a bus route system in town for after hour type of type mm -hmm. of things. You know, or for people going from that into town to the factories or whatever if they don't have a car. Well, I know ECIA start also started with to try to put into place through her through Dart actually. Uh, van share program for right. employers mm -hmm. right and so that's yeah. kind of what don was talking about with the transportation so it kind of goes through employers mm -hmm. the employer maybe does a portion mm -hmm. yeah the group of citizens traveling to whatever company that is shares a portion the driver actually it's gets, gets a, to keep the vehicle right gets yeah. to keep yeah. the vehicle yeah. gets yeah. so many personal miles with yeah. the vehicle on top of you know that's kind of their little benefit you know, mm -hmm. type of deal. So. Yeah, because we had a few yeah. employers that at least had gone through the first couple of meetings with that, but when it came down to them deciding to actually put something in place and they opted, they said they really didn't have the interest. That, that, but I think a lot of it is getting over the hurdle of just being comfortable with it. Right. You know, people like, yeah, I don't know if I want to lose that independence and not drive right. it. And then it's like, hey, it's really nice to be able to sit and not do anything. I mean, drive me around all day if they want. <laughs> yeah, but then you also have the, once you have that and you commit to a carpool, it's like a commitment. You can yeah. say, yeah. well, I'm going to yeah. run to the group, go here afterwards. Right. And right. you got right. eight people riding the vehicle. They all got to be there. They all get there. Right. right. But uh, right. those things are out there that we need to take more advantage. So, just really briefly, um, do you want to get an update on the green space? Oh, real brief update on the green space that um, uh, following the IISC project that concluded in May of this last uh, of this year, um, the uh, green space redevelopment subcommittee and a fundraising subcommittee have formed to um, finalize the um, uh, look and features of the green space um, and we're pursuing with seeking funding from uh, different uh, donors that uh, in the coming months we'll have an idea of what our working uh, capital will be for applying to grants as well as um, a, a scale of the project that we'll be able to um, advertise and sell to the community at large um, and really get the ball rolling on construction and development to start there in the green space and just so people know that's kind of what we're, yeah. what you're kind of looking at is like a band shelter there's going to be a band shell um for performances and then uh, a bathroom a restroom and storage structure as well um, so i've seen several different drawings of that is it going north <laughs> That's wow. the ultimate question. Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna, gonna be, be on north, the north. north. It's gonna be on the north. Yeah. There were a series of um uh, surveys that were done. <laughs> yeah, I see. And this year's experiments and surveys. Year's they, they kind of changed it around if people yeah. noticed that. Yep. And that was the reason they did some tests, did, yeah. which was a very good, yeah. good way to try to structure out which way. The, um, works best because you might done... think it works good until it actually gets up there and then you don't want to have a building in the wrong spot the, yeah. the committee has done their fair share of due diligence and um, community outreach to determine what would look and feel the best and we've pretty much got all the major details decided on now it's just a matter of finding those donors and uh, getting the um well, you got a lot of two by fours in the park, don't you? <laughs> yeah well that's a good thing <laughs> So, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah. well, you know, I mean, I, I think they've had good turnout. Yeah. So yeah. Know. 
<laughs> that will be moved. Um, I think they did have had good turnouts this summer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. very yeah. good turnouts. And we're especially excited. I mean, it's maybe it seems like it's a little bit off for us to be as actively involved in that, but tourism and tour anytime we can bring anybody in, we, they have the potential of falling in love with where we are. And the percentage of people that move because they've seen something that they've been interested in, you know, they visited somebody that it, um or they visited a place, sorry, like uh <laughs> everybody's looking at um. Anyway, the bottom line, you get what I'm trying to say is yeah, people sure. move, they you yeah. gotta visit it and then you love it and then you figure out how yeah. you can get there. And the survey that you have that's the this thing, it's talking about how um people were actually shifting again. There was a shift during COVID and even before that people were wanting to move to where every place had the amenities and then they figured they could work anywhere. And that shift is changing again. And people are moving to where they want to work and they're moving to um where there's affordable housing and the, the basics of life for where they live versus the want to haves now, that whole thing is shifting. So as that whole thing is shifting, then, you know, the whole focus then becomes more, becomes less on, not on quality of life because quality of life is important, but it's more so, do you, are you affordable community? Are you a place where people just feel safe? You know, and we have all that. Now, obviously, we have to work on housing. We have to work on child care because we don't have either of those or to a very limited extent. So, um, and they're also willing to move for jobs, which is a great shift again, because before they weren't. And so now we can, we were nervous about marketing from the standpoint of anything we bring in is competing with everybody else who is already hiring. But now that people are willing to move for jobs, then that isn't as much of a concern because if we can bring the jobs, we can move we, housing. I mean, all that will come together. That's sort of the chicken or the egg thing. But you got to have one or nothing happens. You know, when we're stalemates, you keep saying, well, we'll wait until, we'll wait until no progress is made. And so we're over. Can't I go anywhere if you don't start. Right. Waiting. I believe we're over waiting until. And now we realize we just got to keep, yeah, keep moving. So. Anyway, that's if you have always, you know where to find us. And um, everybody's got our phone numbers. And Bellevue well, Cascade Road, I know where to find you. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Ben. And uh, keep us updated. And yeah. And if you think of anything, say anything, and... whatever, you know, just yeah. always say, what about, what about? We're completely Our open to. <laughs> Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks again for all your support. We love it. Love us back. Oh, that all, so that was all pretty good news, actually. So yeah. Good job. Um, I don't see Lori here yet. Uh, Lisa, would you want to? Do you have much business? Do you want to start? Or do you want to? How would you like to no, proceed? No, I I can I can take uh, take the floor now. I just need a motion to approve the minutes of the September fifth, twenty twenty three board proceedings. Is written by Auditor Smith, <clears throat> excuse me, and authorized publication in the official newspapers. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion and second to approve the minutes of September 5th, 2023 board proceeding as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. I need a motion to approve and authorize the Auditor's Office to issue warrants and the publication of the claims listing in the amount of $609,769.01. Make that motion. Second. A motion and second to approve the claims in the amount of six hundred nine thousand seven hundred sixty nine dollars and one cents, with the note that over four hundred thousand was in secondary roads for bridge material, um, rock and fuel. Um, them three items added up to a little over four hundred thousand. So we are moving forward and improving. Yes. Um, where was I? All in favor, say aye. Aye. <laughs> aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. We need a motion to approve invoices for $7,287.47 to Midwest Construction Consultants, Inc., $16,159.50 to Peak Construction, $20,098.20 to Hometown Plumbing and Heating, $26,600 to Crawford Company, $14,724.99 to Spickley Electric, $120 to Tri-State tri Porta Potty, $316.68 to Republic Services for a total cost 
of $85,306.84 and authorize the chair signature on the project cost recap for the Jackson County Fair and ISU extension, the 4-H Outreach Center for the month ending August 31st, 2023. Make that motion. Second. Motion and second to approve the invoices as presented for the Jackson County Fair and ISU extension billing. All those in favor say aye. All right. Aye. Opposed, same sign. <clears throat> Carried. So I also have the bids for the flooring project at the Andrew Jackson Fair facility. Um, I can open them now, or if you want, I will yield to Lori and we can come back to me. I would suggest that we yield to Lori so we can have a discussion and not yep. take these women's precious time. Thank you. <laughs> I know they're busy. We, it's crazy. We have big, everything is a big project on top of everyday work. So we have okay, three, three so big projects. We are joined by Lori and Ruth from Zoning for an update and uh, business. So uh, we'll good start, morning. good morning, thank you. And we'll start at the top of the agenda, or our agenda, if that's okay. Uh, so the top is action um, on alleged nuisance violations and possible enforcement action for Leisure Lake. We have not sent out our legal notices yet. We, well, we had been discussing with the county attorney about that because we were over the threshold for small claims court. So John has said, let's just cap it out at this amount so we can keep it under that 6,500 because during our niceness of trying to give him other notices and you know a, a nice letter, we're cost well, we're every day that they're in violation is costing a hundred dollars a day for a fine. That is what our fee is set up for. So in the niceness, more fines have been accruing. So Dave or Dave, John has decided that we're gonna just cap it off at five thousand dollars so we can stay under that small claims threshold. So when we were working on some of these, two of them that would need to get those label notices have made some progress, but you know, they're not, they don't have any extensions or anything like that. Um, one was a burnout building where the rafters were all caved in and that was in violation. So now there's a shell of a building, I think it's concrete block, isn't it? A shell of a concrete block building no roof, open doors, windows, with all the other stuff like piled inside, tires and other junk that we can see. We did not get out of our vehicle to go look to inspect what was all in there. This is just what we could see from the road. So now that one and one other one, one other one also has a violation. They're kind of like putting a structure up without a permit, but they've taken old garage doors and are just sticking them on post and throwing the stuff inside of it to camouflage it. So in my eyes, these are still violations because they're the tires are still exposed to the rain, the mosquitoes, still great places to harbor uh, critters. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that you, that we were saying this the same way before we went ahead and pursued this. Okay, just my opinion uh, on a little bit of thought of it. I don't know if I have an opinion or can certainly say. Um, when you talk about a nuisance, and I know in the past, the county has allowed individuals in rural areas to put up a fence or a barrier so they can't see this. this isn't. Now, if you're talking inside a structure, I'm not going to dictate how someone lives or resides inside of their home. I, I, I'm not doing that. Yeah, that's it's not a, third it's a, is it is it a physical uh, burden to the community or a nuisance in violation of eyesight? Uh, there's a fine line where you're walking there because I know the county in the past has allowed fences to be put up to deter from the vision of it. So. Yeah, that's one I'd like to talk to you guys about someday. Yeah, and I can't, that was way before either, any of us. So um, yeah. I, I don't know if that was the right decision or the wrong decision. I can't say, and I'm not, you know, but again, if it's if we need legal advice as far as what is a nuisance and what is defined in the code or our ordinance or whatever it may be, that's just my opinion. I, I, I don't know. My only concern would be the safety concern as far as 
like that, per se, the brick structure. If it's got op open doors and that's a safety issue that people could be hurt, that would be my concern. But if it's just how they're, you know, if they can close the door and keep people out, yeah. whether that's closing a door or putting up a plywood door, you know, my concern is to keep a little kid from wandering in there and getting hurt type of deal, nuisance that way. I, I guess because it's in a residential area, that could be certainly a concern, but there's also many, many areas and buildings in the county that are open that you're not supposed to be on private property, so don't go there. But Correct. You but can't, you're in a... If you're in a residential area, it's different. Again, there's not supposed to be really on your property, right. but you know it is a it is a problem. Probably. So, are we going to encourage people to put up barriers to hide the crap? I'm just saying what we're going to do. Well, the, 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 so, excuse me. I, I said this from the beginning, and I'm in favor of moving forward. But in moving forward, it can't be this is a nuisance, generic kind of ubiquitous, you know, yeah. kind of undefined term. Right. There has to be a specific violation when you send notices. It has to say, these are the issues that are wrong with your property and you must get these things fixed. So they can look at it and go, okay, if I move these tires, if I put up a window, if I do all this and I get it done, right. I understand that might not be everything, but it has to be a defined thing because one interpretation always varies from another. They, that, that The cases that we've addressed, that is addressed, but now we're just hiding them in an open air confinement. That's to take some investigation. If you guys want to go on a little ride with me, I'd be more than happy to. And that way I can kind of point out some other things too. Well, I sort of think that we can do that. Maybe, you know, look at things. I, I guess, again, it, it makes a difference to how it's defined either in the code or our ordinance. What it, was it yeah. specifically says we can control or can't control. Yeah. It, you know, it's, for, like Don said, a specific reason. Right. You know, it has to be a... You know, abandoned tires is 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 part, I think, that's specific in metal parts. Uh, salvage materials is, is specifically laid out in our ordinance. And that's what's in these places. Just they're camouflaged a little more. And it, it's kind of like the one guy that says, well, what if I just throw a tarp over it? It's like you haven't fixed the problem. We just can't see it, but it doesn't fix the health hazards that, that go along with some of this stuff. So then you're talking public health. You're talking health hazards, not zoning violation, then it's public health to me. Well, part of the, the zoning does come around public health. I mean, the tires. Sure. Is, I mean, is, uh, it's connected, of course. Yes, there's some. But then I go back to um, a silage pit that's got 4,000 tires on it. You know, sure. I mean, uh, I guess there's a, that's a different scenario in a different setting. Right. But I, I again, I, I have to have a definition of what's the violation. Is it because there's tires laying there? Does it say that in our ordinance? You can't have more than three tires or something like that? You know, oh, it you know. doesn't give a number. Because a one tire, if I was like doing Leisure Lake or say we get on to Fulton and Green Island, it would be, you have, you know, it would, you'd want to get everything. So, yeah, I mean, Again, I would kind of go with that as far as like the tires, you know, some people put different tires on their trucks for summertime and wintertime driving. Right. Well, so is that, you know, so he leaves them set by his front door or out in his yard because that's where he changed them. You know, not everybody is neat and tidy people. And, you know, so is that is that a violation? Because. He changed his tires and he left them set in his front yard. <clears throat> They're not really abandoned. They're still good used tires. He's planning on using them. It'd be automotive parts, salvage, salvage auto parts sitting around. So yeah, that could be a violation. But they're not really salvage. I know no. somebody that has tires sitting in their field that shoot it. Yeah. And that, from the road. that'd be one. Yeah. I know there's all kinds of scenarios, but could we... Could, would you guys want to go for a ride with me? I mean, one at a time, whatever. But uh, And then we can have a copy of our ordinance with us and kind of look and see what we're actually looking at. Please. Yeah. I know it's a one at a time thing because I wouldn't be able to go with 
And I've been over there several times. I was over there two days ago, actually, looking at a property. So, I mean, I do travel that area. Yeah, but you, yes, without I'm being gonna take, specific. I'm going to take recommendations from you both and your the board. Okay. Um, I I see a high percentage on that last list we got. Was it yesterday? David Moore. Yeah. I see a high percentage that have been completed, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, and for them people, I very much think. Oh, so it's I amazing. Think, I think we are moving forward. And I think we will continue to move forward. I see some that's been past the extended period. Yes, sir. So then are we talking about what we're going to do with that? That is what we need to be getting on and getting those legal notices. Well, again, the if they're past the extension that we give them. Yes, sir. And they have not made any improvements. Now, if I see improvements, I said, we will talk and discuss. But if we don't see any improvements, I think we should move forward, yes. Okay. And we had talked earlier that if they were past the extension and, you know, past all their dates, and even if there was improvement, there was, that was still, we were running with those notices. I, I don't, not so sure that we said that if there was improvement, that they're making an effort that they, we would reconsider. I guess I would like to see us move forward with the ones that have made no effort. Right. Let's start with them. Okay. And then we have, okay. I mean, I think that's a good place to start. They're not it's, even trying for, versus those people that are at least making an attempt. And then maybe the people that are making the attempt but haven't got any extensions will be our next round. That we go for okay but i say start for the ones that have made zero attempts okay so is that our first item discussion action is that was that a motion i guess that would be my motion okay so no effort only so okay i mean I don't know we will do that. that i don't know how many of that um in, involves or in maybe cases. one or two well again it's a start it's, if they have not done anything Start. I'll second a motion. I have a motion and a second to move forward with nuisance violations who have zero completion on them. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Okay. So the next one is the Red Edition Minor Subdivision. Uh, that is by resolution. And they have met all the the criteria in the Jackson County uh, subdivision ordinance to move forward with, with that resolution. Uh, it has been signed off by the departments that need to sign off. There's been a waiver from the county engineer's office in regards to uh, drainage calculations since it's not a, a subdivision with infrastructure, it's just a, a one lot split off of of a parcel. And, and again, Maura, will you explain the minor subdivision? A minor subdivision, and Lisa, correct me if I if I do this not quite right, but a minor subdivision is anytime there's more than two splits in a quarter quarter. So more two or more, excuse me, more than two splits out of a 40 acre quarter quarter. So it'd be like they're going for their third split on that quarter quarter. Absolutely. That's okay. what this one is. Okay. And actually it might be their fourth split on this one. I'd have to look at the map again. Am I correct in saying you're allowed four plus the original? If the original homestead on it, you could put four more on a quarter quarter without a major subdivision? If you could. Those minors. Anything no. less than that is a minor. Because Anything less than four, yeah. Yeah, because these are repeated divisions. Right. Yeah. On a quarter quarter. It, but if they kept them at 10 acre parcels, it would not trigger the, the minor subdivision because the other caveat is that you don't count anything that's 10 acres or greater part of, as part of that split. Right. So for 10 or greater, you couldn't split it more than four times anyway. Right. <laughs> I'll do my math right. I don't but, know. But if you had three tens or three elevens in there, so you had 33 acres into three parcels, and then you had two splits coming out of the other Plus, one, you you're you're, you're, you're still that. legal. We would not allow that 11 acre split. Okay, wait. How would you describe it? 11 acres. 
Mm -hmm. Oh no, but as a as a survey. Well, okay. I, was, then I thought you were doing it without a survey. Oh no, no, okay. Because no, no. I was like, we wouldn't yeah. allow. Excuse it. me, survey. Okay, thank thank you. you. Survey. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Are we all on the same page here? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I I would recommend that that you guys approve this. I don't see any issues with uh, it being a problem for neighbors or adjoining property owners. Uh, it's clean. Okay. I'll second. I have a motion and a second to approve the red minor subdivision as presented. All those in favor say aye. Aye. I oppose same sign. Mm -hmm. Motion carried. Okay. Do you want to get me Yeah. I'm going to take that thing. Okay, I had talked to you guys uh, and sent an email re regarding um, the current zoning fees for zoning applications, which would also include uh, Board of Adjustment actions, zoning commission actions, uh, communication towers, and, and that type of anything that we get an application fee for. So the the columns in the first part, the top part, are the different ordinances, that, or excuse me, resolutions that we have come up with. And there were some contradictory things, some things that did not follow through. And we, how we found this is we were preparing to get our information together for the geo permitting. So they, asked us to do a deep dive into our processes and, you know, our fees have to be up to date when we get that. Well, we found out there was things that we sh there should be fees for that wasn't part of our process. So we want to get that, all this back in place. And then at the same time, we, in the yellow, you can see where we um, have some cost in there. So board of adjustment cost to do a board of adjustment case runs $300 at a minimum. And we just used an average for approximate mailing fees. But in some cases we have, we've mailed out as many as 60 notices for like even for neighborhood notices. So that's going to be tapping that $40. So these are kind of modest. These aren't over the top uh, of what we spend for a meeting. So we are also including like mileage for a zoning board and such and, and things like that that we added in and okay. Yeah, because that's all and these the recommendations are based on other uh counties and or have we done some studying on where as where we're at according we, to the industry. We have. Okay. And a lot of them are no higher than we are currently. Most of them are in that one hundred and fifty to two hundred dollar range, which we can't figure out. I mean, it's. I mean, it's not that zoning is a money making side of the. We're, that's not what we're here to do. But, you know, all this is like, when someone gets a board of adjustment action or to ask to rezone, that's all I seen on the cake. That's not something that every citizen's requesting. So, if you guys want to cover, get closer to covering the cost. Uh, but yeah, others are not. And we've even checked with city of, city of Maquoketa. It seems like most of those other entities are, they're higher in their permitting fees for like a zoning permit to build than we are, a lot higher. A lot of them have a sliding scale by cost. And we did check in the city of Maquoketa also. And there's, it's a by cost of the project. Uh, so, so I see it as we should be trying to cover our expenses and not really have a tax burden on other taxpayers for somebody else's permits. So right. if that's our actual cost or somewhat of our actual cost, I believe we should keep up with um, progression and progress as it is and not expect to have somebody else pay for your improvements and or construction. That's just my thought. Anybody else like to comment? Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, if you're wanting to improve your property, you're 
business, whatever, by doing whatever, then that should be included. Okay. You know, that fee should I mean, be some of these seem extreme. I mean, almost 100%. If you oh, know. absolutely. But if we're that far behind over the last 20 years, then I guess periodic adjustments should have been made, maybe. I don't know. We, we agree. And there was some cases where the, the fees went up and down. So like Zoning Board of Adjustment Commission, uh, it was 150 uh, for Board of Adjustment and 2001, it went up to 210 in 2010, to 250 in 2010, and then back down to 150 in 2014. So there was, we don't know what was going on there, but also they maybe added the publication fees and the notifications uh, cost, which we were trying to figure out how we would do. Uh, when do you add for the publication fee? Is it a flat fee? And then notification you know, you'd have to know how many neighbors you're notifying, and then you collect that in advance. So, and we don't want to bill anybody, so it's easier to include it all at once. But you're right. Um, there were some things, uh, and can I tell you some of the time suckers besides me and your time right now? But uh, minor, our major plus subdivisions, uh, they... Well, for example, one of the major subdivisions that we did this year, they resubmitted that survey a minimum of four times. And for us, we have to start over in our review every time that new survey walks in the door. And the one it creates the most problems for is Janelle in the assessor's office. She has to start with that whole legal description, which is a mile long, go through every little detail to make sure nothing else has changed in that legal description. So uh, we feel that adding adding to that uh, every time a, a new survey walks in the door for review to add a $50 is not unreasonable. And it's, you know, if you're looking at the additional cost and time and what it's taken away from our other duties, it's, it's going to it's not absorbing it at all. Okay. The wishes of the board. Any other comments? And can I also bring up something else? Um, we also wrote in uh, fines. That was something that you um, had talked about before, especially when it, it came to the uh, the one energy, energy conversion, the Met Tower that was erected without permission. Without permission correct. Which is not an isolated case. We get a lot of local people that build without permission, a lot. Is but, this something that's standard in industry too? Yes, All right. the, the double the fine. All right. uh, so basically if it's, uh, pardon me? Double the fee. Double the fee, excuse me, to make the fine, yes. Okay. Yes, sir. So that would be, so if they failed to get a zoning permit for a new house, the fee would go to $400 versus the $200 fee if, uh, yeah. Got it. Got it. So that Met Tower would be a sixteen hundred dollars fund. Uh, yeah, because we called it a communicating fee. tower. It would be a fee. fee. Well, yes. with their, yeah. So this is where all application fees would double if the project is started before the application was submitted or issued. And so if that's a fine, is that a sixteen hundred dollar fine plus, plus the eight hundred? Yeah. Or is it just the $1,600? That's my question. I would say it would be the $1,600 because application fees will be double. Yeah. Because that is for a fine. Per, that would make would be double. So to me a fine is on top of that. Yeah, I get what you're saying. That, so if you're going to fine me for doing something wrong, is that right. so just say the $1,800 or the $800? Oh, well, application is, fees will be double. If that's the application fee is $800, if the fine is double, is that sixteen hundred dollars plus, plus then the application fee? We got to figure out how to word that because I I don't see a problem with the way it's worded. Maybe rather than but fine, it's a late application. Oh, maybe just say late late application, application fee. It's just a fee for not following the procedure. Yeah. Yeah. So, so late application. That was just my question because 
do you want us to redo this and send you an updated copy and then vote on it next week? I'm and that way, too, yes. if we find something that got overlooked, it gives us an opportunity. So I guess maybe discuss that wording also with, with legal counsel. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I don't know. I see what, you know, to me, a fine is usually in addition in to, addition to got it. So right, we're here we just wanting to action on this. Can motion to the table until next week. If you could. Thank you. I'll second that. I have a motion to second the table. Uh, the zoning application that's presented. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. There is one other thing on here I want to draw your attention to. Wind energy conversion systems. I'd like to hold off on setting a fee for that until we're closer to having an ordinance ready. We tabled it already. Okay. Oh, well, here, I'll just bring it up on my next thing. So you put it on your next one and then we'll discuss it. <laughs> I'll bring it up later. So, yeah, bring it up later. Okay. Got it. Uh, so, comprehensive plan. Uh, we can... So the next right. zoning meeting, is that comprehensive plan? Are we supposed to be in attendance to that? No, sir. Okay. You don't I have see, to be. You're I didn't within... understand what that all meant when uh, I mean, it was zoomable too, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. And uh, I am pretty much supposed to once a month bring you guys kind of up to date where we are. Okay. So the committee's not process. coming that we picked either. No. no, that is, they're still trying to set dates for that. Okay. Um, I've it, seen some uh, emails from HDIA also regarding a couple. Yep. So right now, their tentative dates are like the first week in October. Second week of October 10th through well, not too far away from that. Right. So that was the, the first steering committees are looking to meet then. Sure. Uh, so we're we're heading that direction. Everybody, we have a good number of people that are that are on that and people that are ready to participate. Good. Uh, so far we've had 145 people respond to the survey, to the comprehensive plan survey. And you expected? Pardon me? You need a new expected assignment. We need more. How many did you? Oh, we want less. We want more than that, but we're not no, done. Wait, there was a minimum number. That you 200, did. I think, was to make it statistically relevant. Okay. So they can still do surveys. Oh, yes. We're still. Oh, yeah. We're we're running surveys. And I said to date, we have 145. We're not done. We're planning on running the survey until the end of December. Okay. Yeah. We, okay. yes, that survey is to run to the end of December. These are just numbers to date. Okay. Uh, and some of the things that we're going to try to focus on right now in regards to the survey is try to get more people that are uh, in the rural parts of the county. Because right now, the bulk of our participants that have responded to the survey, 55% uh, of them have been in the incorporated city limits of Makoka. So we want to, we, we know that our focus needs to be outside of the city of Makokota. Uh, we're also statistically low on uh, people under the age of 25. We have zero for, for that age bracket. Uh, the highest age bracket's been the over 65s. The next is the 55 to 64. So uh, have phone calls out right now to principals here in Makokota. And I had talked to him before in Bellevue, but I'm going to reach back out and try to get into that younger demographics. The other thing we were kind of surprised on is statistically the people that are applying have a bachelor's degree or greater because over 70% of the people res that responded have a bachelor's degree or greater. So that's that was kind of kind of interesting also. But yeah, just okay. statistic geek here. <clears throat> I thought that was kind of interesting considering that's probably not where where our demographics is overall. So all right. And to, some of the things we've been doing to try to get information out, which I brought you up to date. Uh, in early August, where we were with the fair, 
Makokita Art Experience YMCA board. She's on the board, so she took that information to her board. Uh, Makokita Betterment and Hometown Pride meeting was the same day as the last Board of Supervisors meeting that we were here. So there was 12 participants there. Uh, she and I went to music on the green space back on August 17th, and there was like 200 and 200 participants there. Uh, even though we didn't see where that uh, really helped as much for our statistics, because we can see by date when our spikes were and when our downturns are. And so we still had a good time. I still think you just keep trying. We are. And, uh, we are. And you know, then, get out to the public whenever you can and you know, encourage participation. And uh, like you said, I like to see the only the 30 age group uh, involved a little more. Absolutely. Uh, which this is their future, not I don't know if some of us like guys. for each newsletter or we can go down to and talk to them today to see what we can do. Something. That's a good good idea. Some younger families. Yep. The extension office has their ATV ride coming up here pretty quick. You might be able to catch some people out. But oh, I set up a booth there. Yeah. Offshore. You know, there. There's okay. the one at Offshore the same day, I think. There, supposedly, that, that, supposedly that one is changing dates. Okay. But I haven't but that seen was that usually, but The one at Offshore is pretty big. And right. I don't want, you know, you were talking about it's how 55% of your participants from, are from a coconut, but about every event you just listed. And I still have things at libraries, right? Yes. Um, um yeah, there so should be your online communities pressed and uh, go to absolutely. their library and yeah, or on get online. a survey. But oh, yes, yeah, yeah. do it online. Because um I was at the um Sprayville City Council meeting last week and Carolyn Brady Camp, who's at the Preston Library, yep. took material there. Uh Another council member took material to to Oster House, so we have and, and those that just doesn't just serve the Makokita community either. But uh, and then tonight there's an Andrew City Council meeting next week, Bellevue City Council meeting. So we are getting to City Council meetings. Well, we look at like just um, the Cadman Scram for the Ackerman Building in Sevilla. They're having an open house on the 22nd at 4 p.m. when that's a way to get to Sevilla. Um, you know, there's a few things like that that we can help get out into the community. Okay. Will you guys be attending that? I mean, I can, Depends we can on attend. Depends schedules, I would yeah. say, yes. Okay. We, we, I'm going to try to, but my son's moving into, into house time. Okay. <laughs> it's, oh. So that's at 4 p.m. on the 22nd? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And some fine establishments about midnight or something, you'll get a, a more younger participation, but, you know. <laughs> I'm in bed by the <laughs> Ruth. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's thank, thank you. And you know, that just gave me an idea too. I need to be looking at you guys' calendars where you guys are going and maybe give you guys some of that information or just show up like a fly on the wall. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank and you. And I'm going to be on Just Talk tomorrow. So, okay. Um, you plug that a little bit. Yeah. Okay. And, and then while we're on it, talking about plugging it, for those that are doing, watching this later, you're more than welcome to come, go on to the county website, and it's on the front page of our website, mm -hmm. jacksoncounty.iowa.gov, and you'll be able to go to that opening page, and there will be a link that will take you straight to the, to the survey. survey. Yep. Cool. Okay. Any other questions for us on that? Nope. Okay. So, status on the wind energy conversion system draft. Uh, we, there's a few things that are, I just want to bring to your attention that we're not on the, the ordinance that you guys were thought that we should mirror a little bit and try to tie together. Uh, they, and not that I think it's, you know, over the top or any a big issue. I just want to make sure you're aware of it. There was no tower height maximum on that particular county's ordinance. Well, is FFA involved or FAA, I should say, involved in regulating some of that? Yes. Yes, they would be. And uh the setbacks from property lines was not uh is something I want to pay more attention to probably. 
and most particularly the setback from non-participating property owners. Mm -hmm. Is that? Yeah, that was in, I don't know which one I read. But, uh, yeah, but I don't think it was in. When you set out with others, the one we got back from the uh, Iowa, I was sitting in person or whatever, yeah. with some recommendation. recommendation. Yeah, and that was, I think, part of what she brought up uh, on that, because that wasn't part of that Delaware County ordinance right. that we had. Mm -hmm. So if we want to add that, uh, because we are going to present the draft, a, a, a working draft to the commission as new business next week. But awesome. it has not come out yet. Uh, yeah, I'd like to see it. Okay. So do you do you what do you believe that this is important to add those setbacks for non-participating? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I can go ahead and look for suggestions yep. for that. And then the same uh with uh, from buildings and inhabited structures. Yes. yes. Okay. Paul, I mean, Paul, this is going to come into play there anyway. Yeah. yeah, but some of them are much greater than the fall distance. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if we want to go the minimum, we can. But if we want to, you know, go further from like the non-participating property owners, uh, yeah. I think then, we're in there. We'll look at the draft. Okay. And then one of the other question, what a um. Uh, Different counties have different, do this differently. Uh, who issues the permit? Is that an issue, uh, is it issued from the zoning administrator? And one of the things I'm just gonna just bring up to you guys, some people make it a special accept, uh, special exception use for everything. So it all has to go through the board of adjustment. Some counties have it go through a vote of the board of supervisors. Uh, I don't know, you know, could it become politically charged when it goes through the Board of Supervisors? Or do you guys just want to write a solid ordinance and let it go through the Board of Adjustment as a special uh, special exception use or just... Uh, Was it the recommendation, of, if I remember right, reading through the what the people from Iowa City said that it was better not to go through the supervisor? That's what my thought would be, write that solid ordinance and let it either go through the zoning administrator or make it special exception use for each project and have them go through the uh, Board of Adjustment. If you I wanted... would say, yeah, each project would be isolated to, I, I, you know, I like you to its own specific. I, I, I still think that even if we have the ordinance that it goes through zoning permitting uh, for oh, yeah. application, yes, then absolutely. it goes to the Board of Adjustment. Okay. And then I still think, I, I still think we should ultimately take, ultimately, Take the recommendation from the zoning board and make well. That decision. Okay, let's. We got a zoning commission, which I wouldn't see this going to the zoning commission sure. that makes recommendations to the board of supervisors. We have a board of adjustment that makes the decision, and it doesn't, it doesn't come, come back come to, to the us. board. Uh, we could make these all go through a rezoning. Um, but we don't have a zone particularly set up that it would need to. What would it be? How would you rezone it? Is there a category that this would then? We would, have to create it. We'd have to create it. Yeah. I don't. I, I look at this a special exception. You know. Somehow I feel like I'm okay with the board of adjustment making that decision, but then I also feel like somebody put us in the position to say yeah or nay to that. I I, I don't know. But they put you in the position to approve the ordinance, and if the board of adjustments upholding the ordinance. Well, if our yeah. ordinance is structured correctly, yeah. it shouldn't have to come to us. Yeah, I, I would probably agree with that. I mean, not that we won't be aware of it. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess, you know, I mean, and involved. We, right. We certainly that it would be involved. in the papers because it would have to go anytime it would go through the Board of Adjustment or zoning. When we appoint the Board of Adjustment. Yeah. We do. So. No, that's fine. Yeah. And it's your commission that would be making the recommendation for your approval so on the board special exemption special exception special exception yes sir. Now, yep is that would be like if i'm a, coming in as a, a special exception for windmill or is it special exemption i'm coming in and i want to put up 15 windmills is it per spot i'd say project? typically they're done as projects okay and we can just we can look into that a little more too 
but I believe it's done as the project. <laughs> but this project okay, so spanned over several miles. Yes, sir. So I so I'm, in several different properties. Yes, sir. So to me, it would be more of a I'm taking a special exemption for this windmill, isolated, and this windmill, and that because it a project is usually one spot. Okay. Yeah. You know, and I ain't going to give anybody special exemption over a ten mile spot so right. they can. Right. And they would. You know, you know what I mean? They would be looking because probably each location would have to be, be deep dived into yes. to make sure you're following. Right. right. So to me, it's per. Per tower. Okay, so let's let's just look at it this way. So, is it if they're putting up ten towers, is it ten board of adjustment yes. decisions? To me, that makes sense because okay. they're looking at each individual spot of land for fall distances and non non. Right. You know, because well, you're going to have to notify whatever if it's a five mile radius around each tower. You're going to have to do that. For all ten towers, right. right? And usually it's not five miles. Well, I'm, uh, it's yeah. like, oh my gosh! <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? You know. But so to me, each special exemption exception exception it needs to be per tower. Okay. Because if you go project, that project can be you know mm -hmm. you know because you've got to look at legal definitions of public for each individual right. that project could cover all Jackson County. Yeah. And, and that would cover your administrative, like with your fees you just talked about, the administrative cost. If they just got to pay one fee and you got to go out and do it 10 times. Yeah. Versus they're applying for each, and that covers each individual. You know. So that would be 10 applications to the Board yeah. of Review. That would be 10 applications for, a, for each yep. a application for each tower? Yep. Okay. So... As I see it, if it's a project like you're talking and you could have 50 towers, whoever is sitting here needs to be involved because we're going to get the calls, not the Board of Adjustment. If this goes in the paper, you know who's going to catch it? Whoever is sitting here. And I don't know who it might be, but I'm just saying. <laughs> if down the road, if we're not in part of that decision, I think the supervisors are going to catch it. Yeah, well, you're going to catch it no matter what, but do you, but to know ahead of time versus all of a sudden you're getting the phone call. Oh, and we can have something in place. Yeah, but as far as, do you want to be the deciding factor? I mean, do you want the board of supervisors to have to be that deciding factor, I guess, is my question to you, uh, you know, because you have a, because then we wouldn't want it to go through the board of adjustment because their, decision, the, their is decision is pretty much final. There is a way to, there is some other ways to appeal that, but they're not, is through court. Uh, yeah, and you know, it becomes a, I think we should need to table it. this and look into it further. Got it. So we will Would have, you have that my motion. Order, you know, because again, you get back to a project versus uh, location. Because okay. One project can cover okay. several there were the yeah. locations. Yeah. Taken on. We're going to keep discussing this and okay. bring it forward. That was basically okay. an update anyway. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. May, so, may I should I hold off completely then on what I have to what I was going to present to the commission on Monday? No, I think you plant the seed. Okay, so yeah, get, no, get kind of their opinions and yeah, no, I, I think you get I mean, you, you this get. is a th it's not going to be any action, it's just like here's what we're talking about. This is what we're talking about. What are your, your points on it? What's yeah. your inputs on it? Okay, and then maybe between everybody's inputs. Well, and I guess it gets back to what would it take to set up a no, another zoning. Thing. Yeah, zoning classification. And zoning classification, and then if you have a project like this, spot zoning comes into place where if you have windmills all over and you say, okay, this one acre we're going to zone, it's, it's this, yeah. can you spot zone 10 or 15 it, spots? And then over? what's that doing to other people as far as if that's zoned yeah. different? It, it might be just better as a special exception use under A1. Okay. It is what my thought and not the rezoning, but, but then, but that would put the, that would, that rezoning though would get it back in the commission's hand and then be a recommendation to All the board. To for further discussion. Yes. So yeah. there's just. With your board. Oh yeah. It's huge. Big circle here. Okay. All right. I think we covered it. 
Thank you very, yeah, very, thank very you. Good. Have a good day, girls. Ladies. And please get prefer. with me when you want to go for a little ride. Okay. I'm available today. I'm not. Okay, just check in. <laughs> you don't have a car this Oh, you're not available. But I don't have a car this I mean, no, it's all good. Okay, I was. Can, get a, can I get a copy of those two addresses? Two. You know, sometimes it's good to go yeah. without. There's a couple with, for sale yeah. over there, and I have to go back over there anyway, so just email them to me too, will you please? Okay. Thank you. Very good. Thank yeah. you. Can you email them to me? Actually, it might help if a couple of them sell. It might get proof. So. <laughs> it's like, I can't tell you no, I don't think, but I can make you ask I'm for a, a FOIA request. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Back to business here, and I see, Mike, do you want to address the board? We're past, we went slightly went past the visitor section, but I didn't know if you wanted to address the board today. Or are you just listening? I'm I'm just listening. All right. All right. Can you hear us? I can hear you fine. All right. Thanks. Join every minute. Right. And we got your emails on the upcoming CPR classes, and we appreciate that. And uh, uh, classes. EMT classes. EMT classes. Like, I'm sorry. Gonna be a busy winter. Yeah. That a boy. That's why we got you. So just so everybody knows, we are offering an EMT class. Mike, if you want to hit on that. EMT and EM, EMR. EMR. Yep, EMR is uh, um, it's a new level of first responders. So most people know that as first responder and EMT. So we are hitting uh, both of those classes. So we'll be teaching four nights a week um, throughout the county to meet everyone's needs. Awesome. Yeah, looking hopefully to, we can get some, looking get to some help participation. Looking volunteer in your communities. Yeah. Good classes to take. Absolutely. It always comes into play somewhere. Well, we appreciate it, Mike. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank uh, you. All right. So are we back to you, Lisa? Becky just walked in. Did we want I, I Lisa, Lisa was Becky. long before Becky on my agenda. I'll, I'll yield to Becky because I think there'll be oh, such a good question. More of a work thing. Are you here to visit? Or are you here? I'm to... here for one quick thing and then work session later. Okay. Okay. Lisa, you're up. <laughs> But she was yielding. Uh, you, I was yeah. going to yield to Becky since she was here. We enjoyed. If you want me to, yeah. Becky from uh, Human Resources joined us. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> I just have one quick thing for you. So the Civil Service Commission for Jackson County has three individuals on it, two of which the board appoints, one of which the county attorney appoints. The board appointments are two-year terms and six-year terms. We just had a six-year term of Richard Sherrard expire August thirty-first. So I am here today to ask for discussion and or reappointment of that position. Um, Richard is interested in fulfilling somewhat of the next six year of the term. What that would look like, I don't know, but he is interested in the reappointment. Um, I, I would say if there has not been any issues and everybody is um, okay with the reappointment, I mean, we've talked to law enforcement and, and mm -hmm. whoever concerned. And yeah. so yeah. One second. Motion to second to reappoint uh, Richard Sherrard to the Civil Service Commission uh, for a designated period. As presented, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. And that will be for a six year term from September 1st of 23, ending August 31st of 29. Thank you for that clarification. You're welcome. So I have a certificate and then a standard letter that they get letting them know they were reappointed. I'll just leave these with you. You can sign them, give them back to Luann, and she can scan a copy to me and mail the ones, other ones to Richard. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Okay. Lisa? Okay. So as I stated before, I do have the bids for the pouring project at Andrew Jackson Care. Three bids were received. Um, so the first bid I have today is from Till Flooring. And this there was an RFP put out for this, right? Correct. That was the way Jerry did that, correct? I can't okay. tell you that. I don't know. So they're all bidding the same apples to apples. That's what I mean. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, it was getting from, it well, came there was from, a certain product right. in, that they wanted, and uh, yeah, a certain. Yeah, so I think this was probably something between Jared from um, Imagine the Possibilities and Marty would be my guess, because I know we talked about it. Yeah, so, and we were up there. We all visited up there and we looked at it. 
So this is from till flooring. This the um, the project bid is for twenty one thousand eight hundred ninety one dollars fifty three cents. The next opening here for the bid is from Feller Flooring. This is for twenty thousand five hundred and seventy two dollars and ten cents. And the final bid is from Schneider Flooring. This bid is for $17,731.50. Um, does the state, I guess in, in the bids, do they state the material are we being used and to tear up and all, all the above? So the last bid that I opened was from from Schneider Flooring, and um, it does state in here disposal by owner. Um, they're talking about twenty seven hundred and fifty square feet. Um, they're talking about some adhesive, uh, vinyl cove base, uh, more cove base. It looks like. Installation of the flooring, installation of the cove base, and there also is a tear out fee and a floor prep fee included. Included. Okay. So that's from Schneider. Schneider Flooring. This is from Feller Flooring. He uh, has down for the product installation, tear out, dumpster fee, shipping fee, glue, skim coat, install the skim coat, moldings, cove base install the cove base with glue and to grind five bad spots out for his total quote of 20,572.10. And was there a square footage there included? There is not. And so a dumpster, I would guess, would be disposal? Mm -hmm. I would say, yes. Is there a mount included in that dumpster? 225. Okay, so that'd be minimal um, for if we included that in the Schneider bid for our expense okay. because it said we had so this the first bid that I opened was from Till Flooring. This is for a vinyl plank flooring. Um, looks like 2,650.43 square feet. He talks about some transition material and labor. Some Sorry, what's the square feet? 2,650.43 square feet. And for Schneider's, his was for 2,750 mm -hmm. square feet. Um, talks about transitions, material and labor, adhesive, the installation, the tear out and haul away of the existing flooring. Um, the dumpster fees for waste materials, the subfloor prep and the leveling allowance, vinyl coat base and shipping and delivery for $21,891.53. I guess the only question I would have uh, that maybe Schneider did not address was the leveling. I don't know what that is. Well, the leveling but is- That they, could be in this whole installation. I mean, that. obviously, I a floor agree. installer should know, you know, and he does commercial flooring, so I'm well, assuming he just didn't spell it. Well, out. it says disposal by owner, which would be us, right? Is uh, also dumpster rental and all that included, or is that something that we would also have to include? Is that mm -hmm. two point five? No, but you know, that to me, that's a trans state transfer station fee to, to right. take the material. But do we have to rent dumpsters and all that kind of stuff to put it in, or? I don't think the dumpster fee is going to be $3,000. Two twenty-five. dollars hmm? The dumpster fee is $2,25. Yeah, but what's the... Uh, yeah. Uh, do, you want, do you want time to review these? Yeah. As you mean, take a recess? Can we take or a recess and the table look them over? That, I'm sorry? Can we take a recess? At this point, walk them over. Yeah. Let's um, do you have other business, Lisa? I do not. Okay. 
Well, we got Luan. Luan. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to start with the Good morning. Good morning. Right. Uh, for the calendar this week, at 10 30 this morning, or whenever the meeting is done, we have a work session to discuss maintenance department staffing. At two o'clock this afternoon is a Limestone Bluffs executive meeting for Don. You told me where that was. Sure. Okay, Dan Dyer as well. Um, at four o'clock, Don has a Maquoketa River Watershed Management Authority executive committee meeting by Zoom. Tomorrow, Wednesday, September 13th at 9 a.m., Don is on KMAQ's Just Talk program. Um, on your calendar, it shows that at 10 o'clock is a zero to five and 60 minutes meeting for new, uh, for by Zoom for NIN. That's been moved to the middle of our meeting on September 19th. So um, 4 p.m. is an early childhood Iowa board special meeting by Zoom for NIN. At 6.30 is Municipal League for Mike. And where are they going to have that this time? I don't think I've got a notification. I have not got a... So maybe that's a tentative one. Information on that, yeah. Okay. Um, also, from 5.30 to 8 o'clock tomorrow is Cars Dinner and Open House at Clover Ridge, that any of you are invited to attend that. Thursday, September 14th at 10 a.m. is an Iowa HHS Council meeting um, by Zoom for Jack. Um, at noon is a Jackson County Area Tourism Association meeting by Zoom um, for any of you, but Mike usually goes to that. At six o'clock is Limestone Bluffs RCND's 30th anniversary dinner in Cascade. Mm -hmm. And any of you can attend that. I assume Don's going to attend. I don't mm -hmm. know about the rest of you. Just make sure to RSVP to Stephanie if you are going. Um, Friday, September 15th at 10 a.m. is the 7th Judicial Department of Corrections meeting in Davenport for NIN. I think that was the one that was moved from the from last week. Monday, September 18th at 1 p.m. is a Waste Authority of Jackson County meeting at the transfer station for Mike. At 3 p.m. on Monday is the Regional Governing Board meeting um, in Davenport for Jack and alternatively for Nin. 7 p.m. Monday night is the Together We Build meeting for Nin. And also at 7 p.m. is the Jackson County Zoning Commission meeting um, in the community room or by Zoom for any of you. On Tuesday, September 19th at 9 a.m. is our next regular meeting. That morning at 10 a.m. is where they move the zero to five um, in 60 minutes meeting for NIN. At five o'clock that evening, it's a conservation board meeting at South Sibula Lake. Um, NIN has been attending those. At six o'clock is the Jackson County Economic Alliance meeting for Don. And at seven o'clock is a board of health meeting for NIN. And I think our ECI one is in person or Zoom. Okay. They're not always yeah, clear. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, the other business I have for you today um, in your packet is a contract from Growth Services. That's um, a maintenance contract that we have with this company for the care facilities wastewater treatment plant. So this is something that we have had every year since that was built. I'm looking for approval of that unless you have any questions first. Did it go up from the last time? I think a little bit. It is a yearly inspection that we have to have completed mm -hmm. septic field. So moved. I have a motion and a second to approve the growth services contract for Andrew Jackson Care Facility as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Um, did all of you see the letter from the city of Makokota about the uh, communication center advisory board 
meeting is talking about um, dispatch, 911 dispatch. Uh, we have two places, the, the supervisors have two places on that committee on that board. So I don't know. It's been oh, I think I seen that, something so. a month ago or better. Yeah. Yeah. So the, their um, meeting. This is, this is a board that's not met for years and years correct. and years, if I'm correct. Correct. And we discussed it years years ago so yeah i did i did see it so whatever comes about it i guess we'll proceed and yeah that meeting is on october 4th at 6 p.m if a couple of you two of you would like to attend that i'd attend it that's right okay all right. That's all I have for you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone recess? Um, I guess the one place I have on like before we recess, I look at it. Was it out for bid or was there a request for proposal? I can't there, answer that. Is there a way we can find that out because that dramatically changes how or affects how we uh, award this? I think you gave direction to Jared. I think we told Jared to get the three bids when we were up there. What I'm saying is, if it was out for bids, we take the lowest one. If it's a request for proposal, we can see which one best fits what we are looking for. So that's why I'm, that's why I'm asking: was it a request for proposal or was it out for bids? I would. Can't say positively, but I say it was out for bid. Okay. At this time, we would take a short recess. So we will reconvene our meeting at this time. And we had um, a little time to review the bids for the care facility flooring project. Like and what is the wishes of the board? I'll make a motion we proceed with the Snyder bid for $17,731.50. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second to approve the bid from Snyder Flooring for $17,731.50 for flooring at Andrew Jackson Care. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Um, any other reports from commissions or boards? Um, I just want to say briefly, we did have a 911 board meeting last week, and Nin was here also. So um, there's a couple things that come about in that that we don't normally talk about. Um, so Lynn had applied, or emergency management, I should say, applied for an AFG grant, which he we briefly got an email yesterday of 10 or 12 counties that were awarded some funds, but that's still in the work. So it was over a $600,000 grant that he applied for. So we're still waiting to hear on that. Um, the grants he did receive, or we did receive, Bellevue Police got 42000 and um, Maquoketa Police Department got 79200 from a USDA grant. So we have $120,840 worth of grants there for a radio system. So that was good. Um, they also proposed, correct me now if I'm wrong here, um, for... EMS services or um, each each um, fire, whether it be EMS or fire, so right. four, nine departments, and they're considering getting uh, 14 radios, uh, two from Macoga, two from Bellevue, one each for the rest of the departments for their, if you want to call their squad that goes out on every call. So they all and have their main, yeah, their main unit that uh, responds to every call, whether it be fire department or um, rescue, EMS. I, I think Bellevue EMS already has theirs, but yeah, from the way it sounded, Bellevue had two already, but they needed the repeater part of it or something, so right. they wouldn't need the full so system. The repeater system uh, in the cars, uh, by the way, is working excellent. They really like them. The only gripe we have is some of the installation that was done. So it was a little shoddy, maybe. Um, so we're still working on that. We'll um, to to uh, to correct maybe some obstacles so that don't get damaged, or components don't get damaged, I should say. So, yeah, I mean, all good things from the radio system. Heard good things. They're they're liking it. They're liking the way it works. Um, 
I guess maybe the installation was overlooked a little bit, maybe as, as far as yeah. how much it would have cost or how they would have done it. So uh, live and learn, I suppose, if you want to yeah. call it. But good reports back from that, from 911 anyway. Well, that's yep. good. Last Thursday, I had two meetings at 11 o'clock, and they didn't manage to make them both or at least listen to them. Um, the uh, Mississippi Valley uh, uh, Workforce Development, I'm on the subcommittee of the business, and we were issue, uh, going through a couple of the applications and trying to help people re ma uh, retain some employees and stuff. They, they apply for grants or money through... Um, the business committee trying to help that one of them is doing a training the trainer program to kind of help beef their people up so they can do more training to keep them energized. We did a couple of those grants. Um, the other one was the the Jackson County tag. And ECIA is really happy with what's going on with down at the senior center with the, the new tours that the, the volunteers have been organizing. And they're really pleased with some of the participation they're getting. They're hoping they can encourage that and keep it growing. Um, the farmer's market was well supported through uh, um, the uh, RTA, and uh, everything seems to be going pretty good. And again, as we stated, RTA is looking for drivers. Yep. So um, if you're looking, maybe some retired people and out I there think or key, young people. You know, it's like full-time or almost full-time. Yeah, I think the key don't... is uh, really flexible. Yeah, yeah whatever, I mean, you can, whatever you desire. And they're willing to train. Eight hours, so. a, eight hours a week, eight hours a month whatever kind of works into your schedule there and they're willing to help you get the licensing that you need to drive for them. Yep. Um, IRS again is kind of still moving forward. They're hoping to get some of that started here shortly. They've got all their ducks in the line that way. So they're going forward that way. Um, ECIA, as I mentioned in past meetings, they're looking to hire somebody. They, I believe are reaching out they did some interviews and are reaching out to a candidate to make an offer. So hopefully within the week here, we'll know um, if that offer was accepted and kind of be moving forward with that personnel. And our personnel that was leaving is going to stay on and help train just a little bit outside of her other job. So that was a nice, because they got a lot of different forms and all that, that you got to fill out and send into the government, just like anything else. And that deals with the early childhood stuff there. So that's about all I had. Okay. Any other business before the board? Motion to adjourn. Very good. I have a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Meeting adjourned.